I'm Jake Brenner. My name is Stuart Crittenden. I'm the head brewer. I am also head brewer at Grand Rapids Brewing Company. Brewing here has been nice. It's a little different than Grand Rapids Brewing Company before. We have more space. We've added five more fermentation tanks, a hot liquor tank. And bigger fermenters, bigger mash tun, bigger kettle. So everything is just much bigger scale. We've got more flexibility. And of course, coming into a new facility is always nice. You're not dealing with something that somebody set up 25 years ago. Working with organic is fun. It's definitely interesting being one of the pioneers in doing this in this area of the country. Oliver Hops, we've worked mostly with Brian Tennis. He's the head of the Michigan Hop Alliance. and He's also the owner of the only organic hop farm in Michigan. This is uh, New Mission Organics. We're a 20-acre organic hop farm located in Elmina, Michigan, which is North Lelanau Peninsula. And we grow organic hops. 20 different varieties, we believe in leaving a better footprint once we're out of this hop yard. And 100% of these hops, the next harvest will be going to Grand Rapids Brewing Company. One of the things we're really looking forward to, we've been farming organically for the past four years with hops and all of our hops have been going in conventional beers, so we're extremely excited to see that Grand Rapids Brewing Company is coming in. They're going to be the first certified organic brewery in Michigan, and our hops are actually going to go into a certified organic beer, which is fantastic. We're super excited to be working with Jacob and Stu down there. Those guys make killer beers, and everybody Mark Sellers hires and works with their Class A people, so we're really excited about working with that entire organization. Initially, working with organic ingredients, we thought it would be a bit of a challenge just because we're more limited. And also, of course, the amount that we can get. Not everybody is all producing all organic grains. There's stricter regulations and rules on the quality of the ingredients. Once we actually started using the ingredients, everything is really high quality. So everything's turned out really, really nice, really tasty. What we're trying to position ourselves is an end consumer that's going to allow farms to start growing more organic grains, different varieties and things like that, and malteries to make different styles of malt so that we can use more different kinds of ingredients because obviously they're not going to be making them if there's not anybody around to buy them. We worked out a program with Organicycle and Grassfields Farms. Since our spent grain is all organic, we're able to send that out to them as feed filler. Uh, cows love it. Uh, tastes great to them and it also keeps them from just eating high expense feed. We also send some of the grain up to Nantucket Bakery to do some spent grain loaves and things like that. I think the most exciting thing for me personally about working with Grand Rapids Brewing Company is this new feed source that's going to be coming in. I, I uh, love to balance the ration for the cows and try to figure out exactly how they're going to perform the best on the given feedstuffs that we have. Farms are vertically integrated. So we're always thinking about the beginning and the end, you know, from the sun all the way to the customer. And it's, it's the idea of sustainability, but also it's just a wise move, I think, to not want to waste anything and to change something that is often a waste product into something that's valuable. By far the most important part of cheese making is the milk. And there are a lot of restrictions on what we can't use on the cows, what we can't use on the grass. One thing we've noticed since we stopped using those things that are restricted for organic or, or prohibited is that our cows have become a lot more healthy. And we see with the cheese as well that we don't need all the non-organic enhancers and preservatives and anti-caking agents. It's just cheese was originally made to preserve milk and it's, the process is, has integrity. The process stands alone. I think for our business as a whole, what's going to be the most exciting is to be able to recommend a place that there are other restaurants that are using our product, but we're going to be able to say this is one that's actually contributing back to us. And I think that's a great model for other relationships, that we can actually exchange something instead of just uh, have uh, customers or vendors. So I'm excited to see how it works out. The menu of GRBC is basically designed to complement beer. So with that, we want to use as many local ingredients as possible. It's all about relationships with food and meeting the farmers, knowing where your food comes from. A lot of the dishes that we have are rustic in presentation, but the approach with the food is that it's a lot of time and care put into it by the chefs. Something might appear to be just a simple chips and dip, but that dish in particular, we're sourcing local northern Michigan rainbow trout and we cure it and smoke it in our own smoker. It's steps like that 
throughout our whole menu that we try and apply. We have a lot of shareables, so the idea of sharing beer, food, and friends is one that we like to highlight here. In the future of Grand Rapids Brewing Company, I'm definitely looking forward to branching out into some different styles, the changing of the seasons, obviously. We've pretty much just been brewing in the winter so far. Our taste, as well as most beer drinkers' taste, change within the season. So looking forward to spring and summer coming, getting some different styles on, getting a baseline, seeing what's selling. Also hopefully doing some small bottling projects, some barrel projects, things like that, to kind of get people excited about the beer.